Hello! Welcome to Essay Nights. The Essay Slayers. My name is Julie and I will be your instructor as we read through Jane Austen and Amb. Euro. And Amb. Trained. As use of irony and pride and prejudice essay. The article source is embedded in the video description below. Feel free to read along. Please note that you can get a custom, plagiarism free essay for as little as $10 a page at Essay Nights. The link is in the description. Irony is the art of expressing two meanings simultaneously. The obvious surface meaning the majority will regard as the only meaning and on a deeper profounder meaning which lies behind the obvious. The tension created by this ambivalence can be and has been put to a variety of uses. Ironies abound in Shakespeare, so do they in Dryden and Poe Shakespeare employ them to underscore the tragic plight of a man, while Dryden and Pope use them to mock at human follies and foibles among the 48 writings. Fanny Ernie Unregistered Trademark S. Cecilia Unregistered Trademark, Unregistered Trademark Comilla Unregistered Trademark and other novels are based on quiet but incisive irony. Thomas Love Peacock's O.E. Head Long Hall. O.E. Nightmare Abbey Unregistered Trademark. Maid Marian. And so on are the vehicles of attacks on the cranks and the fans of his day but very few writers have exploited all possible resources of irony as Jane Austen it may not be an exaggeration to say that Jane Austen is nothing if not ironical. Irony is her very forte. It is in fact the very soul of her art. Pride and prejudice, for instance, is steeped in irony. To put it in other words, it is an artistic blend of ironic and dramatic design almost everything in this novel be it related to the context or to the style, points to an ironic contrast between appearance unregistered trademark and reality unregistered trademark it is the complex handling of OE first impressions that lends to Austin unregistered trademark s irony. Perhaps the opening sentence of the book offers the apt test illustration of irony. It states that oh a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife and claims that ought is truth universally acknowledged but if the story unfolds itself we learn that all universal truth lies in the opposite direction. Mrs. Bennet on registered trademark s concern for getting her daughter's gainfully husbanded constitutes the basic theme of pride and prejudice. In an essay Reuben Brower writes, In analyzing the ironies and assumptions, we shall see how intensely the dialogue is, traumatic in the sense of defining the characters through the way they speak and are spoken about, the confusion that even very intelligent people are capable of making between the apparent and the inherent is initially drawn towards Wickham mainly because of his external graces and Darcy unregistered trademark his first reaction to Elizabeth is that of repulsion simply because to quote Darcy, she's own it handsome enough to tempt him. The situations at least a good number of them in Pride and Prejudice are also very ironical. Darcy unregistered trademark s First proposal to Elizabeth is made exactly at the moment when Elizabeth hates him most. When Darcy proposes to her she simply rejects him and blames him for separating Jane from Bingley. She further accuses him of his abominable treatment of Wickham she tells harshly my opinion of you was decided. Your character is unfolded in the recital which I received from Mr. Wickham can you defend yourself? Unregistered trademark, later on Darcy changes, and Appley, the changes are mostly for the better. The change Darcy does not feel shy of confessing. I have been a selfish being all my life, in practice, though not in principle. Once Darcy has been humbled, Austin turns her irony on Elizabeth. She shows that Elizabeth in resentment of Darcy unregistered trademark as conscious superiority, has exaggerated his faults and failed to see that there is much goodness in him then again. Liddy unregistered trademark as elopement with Wickham, which Elizabeth fears shall spoil her prospects of marriage with Darcy, strangely enough brightens the same similarly, Lady Catherine unregistered trademark as attempts to prevent this marriage succeeds in only hastening it. All these clearly spells out Austin unregistered trademark as attitude towards life. She knows that human nature and human situations are often too incongruous and contradictory. But she does not deride this aberrations with the cruelty of a Dryden or a Pope, her irony is always gentle and sympathetic she uses it mainly in order to raise a hearty laughter. This, however is not to suggest that her comic is not rooted in any sense of responsibility. She has very certainly a distinct moral purpose of her own. 
She will not only expose the antithesis between sense and nonsense, she will at the same time state her preferences in unmistakable terms needless to say she casts her vote in favor of sense there is pride in life is also there is prejudice. But life, in order to be ideally lived needs to be a combination of both Darcy has to stoop to conquer his pride before he becomes worthy to be happy and Elizabeth has to get over her prejudice in order to enter into a life of bliss. It is this moral vision that spells itself out in course of the novel O.E. Pride and Prejudice. Though Austin unregistered trademark S. Irony plays the all-pervasive, yet it never allows this vision to attain the abominable portions of any kind of didacticism indeed, it may be said that one of the greatest charms of this novel is derived from the gentle O-tongue in the cheek way of describing people and situations. For this Jane Austen unregistered trademark as tales offer a rippling sense of pleasure to her readers. Thank you for taking your time to listen to me. I hope you enjoyed learning about Jane Austen and Amb. Euro. And Amb. Trained. As use of irony and pride and prejudice as say as much as I did. Kindly remember that you can get a custom, plagiarism free essay at SA Nights for as little as little as $10. The link is in the description. See you next time.